Other than having a friend that looks suspiciously like the Vault Boy, I have never dabbled in any of the games or any of the lore of Fallout. With the release of the new show, I refuse to watch it until I know what I'm getting into lore wise because i want to know what they're missing today we'll be diving into the lore behind all 118 fallout vaults i didn't even know that there was 118 vaults until today <laughs> This is a compilation of all of the vaults from the Fallout series, all in numerical order. This will not, however, cover Vault 33 from the new TV series, as we don't know much about that yet, aside from the fact that it is clearly a vault similar in style to Vault 76 and Vault 101, but we will look to cover the show in a future episode. This compilation mm. will also include all of the non-canon and cut vaults from other planned Fallout games and the extended universe. I want to know also, the morbid one so bad. Microphone sound. I've upgraded the I yearn for these it. videos, and unfortunately, there's a big difference, but hopefully, it's not too distracting for you. But with all that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy some Fallout lore as we explore the horrors of what was known across America as Project Safe House, the saving of humanity from nuclear war, but also an opportunity for Vault Tech and the government to test on their public. This is Damn. all of the Vault lore. Imagine being the <laughs> Imagine being the unlucky person to go in the wrong vault. You got locked in the furry vault. Damn it! The war the Middle East was getting more no! heated. The government had to act, and as mentioned before, had to set up Project Safe House in 2015. The BDSM One vault. With this was that the funding was low due to how bad the economy was within America and within the rest of the world, as well as resources were running dry everywhere. Luckily, as Vault Tech began getting things ready for their construction, a technological breakthrough happened. Damn, the first Apple Watch goes crazy. To be created and constructed at a rapid pace. To prove to the government that these bunkers were worth investing in to protect its civilians, vault -Tec created a concept vault to show how they would be used and how they worked. This concept vault was created outside of the vault -Tec headquarters within Los Angeles and would be simply labeled as the Los Angeles Vault. After seeing how it worked, the government invested in vault -Tec, asking them to create a total of 122 vaults across the country, which would reportedly save 0.1% of the American population from the inevitable nuclear holocaust. As the Great War approached mm. and nuclear bombs started to be fired, the what Los would you do? vault was sealed <laughs> and kept its residents safe from the bombs. Proving that what these would you vaults do? actually worked, the original concept I would just vault accept was able my to death. survive the war and protected I everyone would. inside. Eventually in the year 2092, the doors opened once again as its inhabitants it's inevitable. ventured out and went on to settle in the boneyard and continued to set up their town of Adatum. Some, however, remained within the vault up until 21... Here's some something deep for you to think about every single day after you were born you're dying on 55 however one faction was growing in force during this time that faction being the master's army oh my god what Unity, is that a group set up to reform humanity under a new image of the super mutants the master would take humans and dip them into the fev virus, huh? turning them into super mutants, this is a part of the bdsm ball and helping them to become a dominant <laughs> within the wasteland because of this goal the master took to the los angeles vault what and used the? his residents to dip them into his forces but this vault was a great place for the master to set up his main base and conduct his operations it would be here in this vault where he would be based and with that would construct a cathedral above it for almost a decade the master's forces would be based here within the cathedral and los angeles vault until is the it a raccoon in the corner no that's a rat where the vault would be <laughs> infiltrated and destroyed by the vault dweller who killed the master in the process and detonated a nuclear bomb located within the facility. The Why would you have that in the facility? Was proof that their concept worked and it would in fact protect its residents from the horrors of the nuclear <laughs> war. However, it would be the events of the post-war which would eventually destroy I think the whole concept of a self-destruct button now. is so useless. Like, it is... But it's the most stupid thing imaginable. Vault 3 was constructed within the Mojave Wasteland in the southwestern part of Las Vegas. This vault's original concept was not to experiment on its residents. New Vegas. I heard a lot of people hated this game. Vaults. The inhabitants of this Don't know vault why. enjoyed life there. It was safe and things were running relatively well. However, within the 23rd century, the vault Hey, did that say Lester? Is that a GTA the reference? The was so severe that the residents Damn. were forced to open up the vault doors to find help out in the wasteland. 
Iceland. As the vault dwellers ventured out to find help, they would get along with a lot of the towns outside living within the wasteland, and were going to set up trade links and How are we, OG? We're grow. learning weeks, all of the Fallout vault lore right now. Well, all 118 vaults vault that they had recently from opened, good to bad. A faction known as the fiends. The fiends would venture to this vault and would speak with the vault dwellers, but because of the vault dwellers naivety and lack of security, the fiends were able to successfully con them and take their vault from them. The fiends but he has a target on his forehead. The inhabitants living within the vault and would set it up as their impenetrable base of operations, growing stronger and stronger over the time they spent there. <laughs> vault 3 was a paradise. It was a real safe haven for those that lived oh, there. Oh, what a real paradise. Once they were isolated from the rest of the world, they were able to make maintain order, run a democratic society, and could live their lives without worry about the barbaric nature of the outside world. If the water leak didn't happen, these residents could have lived out the rest of their lives in the safety of Vault 3. Hmm. But alas, all their residents lay dead as the fiends grow in their numbers, becoming a nuisance for the rest of the Mojave Wasteland. I would hate living in a vault. It depends on the vault, vault though. Vault 8 was like Vault 3 in the sense that it was also one of the 17 control vaults without an experiment taking place. I'd get Nothing claustrophobic really very quick. Eight. It just had one simple goal. That was to open 10 years after the bombs fell in 2087. However, this did not happen. And in fact, in 2079, the residents were given the all clear signal and emerged from their vault. Luckily, the inhabitants were equipped with a Garden of Eden creation kit. And once emerging from their vault would go on to establish Vault City. As time progressed, Vault City grew in size. With the Garden of Eden creation numbers. kit. It was a safe haven for those rare few that were allowed residency within the city. Vault the type of shit <laughs> they got is the true. One of the best medical they must have a lot the going on. Of the I heard that a lot of billionaires have been making the underground vaults lately this past year. Information hub that had a Don't know why. And archives and a large storage space. I think it's a sign. Other supplies essential to the well-being of the city whilst the citizens of the city rarely if i got ever, my power armor to the lower brother when i was in the seventh grade and fallout was at its peak i dreamed about making my own power armor and how i would do it what would i put on it oh my god i would be indestructible levels of the vault it is clear that vault 8 is still working to the benefit of the vault dwellers and it's used to great effect to help power and maintain this fantastic city it is one of the most efficient vaults on this list and still to this day is probably still in operation helping the true i bet it's like an underground warehouse and information to help them grow as a civilization Vault 2. Vault 11 is the first oh, example of a vault with a terrifying <laughs> experiment used on its inhabitants. First one to die vault off. Vault 11 might seem like a standard control vault, but realistically, its main ambition was to run a simple social experiment. Oh, the God, experiment here we go. The here was its inhabitants were told that they must sacrifice one of their fellow vault dwellers each year. And if they refused Bro. to do so, the vault's life support <laughs> system would be permanently shut down and all would die. They all so transformed the into the insects. In reality, the test was to see how long it took for the residents to all join together and go against the rule of the vault. Once they did, they would be let free and be praised for joining together with the vault automated response system saying they were a shining Oh, they just kept humanity. on sacrificing. During this time, however, elections took place to oh. see who would be the chosen one to be sacrificed every year to the vault. So the rest made So live. real? The person with the most votes would be selected oh. as the overseer. And at the end of the year, they would then be killed and elections would start all over again. The first sacrifice it actually the is, was though. the original overseer who knew about the original experiment, but hid it from the rest of the the population. In response to this, the residents decided that it must always be the overseer who should be sacrificed. Hence why the elections took place every year. As time progressed on, how big were these vaults? A way of getting rid of people groups didn't like. Powerful groups would make it so that elections were rigged, as well as posting propaganda up on the walls to try and force the population into getting rid of their chosen candidates. 
Alliance. This sparked up battles between groups, with one lady known as Catherine Stone going around stalking and killing members of their group. <laughs> Bro, what? The Justice Block to try and save her husband, who had been nominated by them for Overseer. Due to this act, Catherine would be captured and would become the next Overseer. However, as Overseer, Catherine would enforce Overseer Order 745, meaning that the oh, election God. process would not be down to a democratic vote, but would be chosen by the vault's computer system and a random number generator, meaning anyone could be up for the role of Overseer and no one had a choice who they oh, wanted to sacrifice. Nah. This order, however, caused panic and upset and eventually led to fighting with almost all of the Leaving it to AI? In the hey, yo! Eventually, only five residents remained Thank within you. the vault and in an act of mm. suicide, they defied Bedtime? the computer that no! sacrifice. Don't get sacrificed, okay? That's all I gotta say. You'll see this on YouTube. I'm gonna be posting all of this on YouTube, by the way. I'll be learning. Today's a learning day. You'll definitely get sacrificed. Hey, just think really, really hard. You're gonna get sacrificed tonight. 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 For the vault! <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> After this happened, the vault congratulated them. You were chosen. All their but I'll be live tomorrow. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's gonna be a game day. Tomorrow's gonna be a game day. I'm probably gonna be playing Resi 2, continuing that game tomorrow. Bye-bye! Four gunshots were heard, with one person at the end of the tape being heard sighing and dropping their weapon. To this date, Vault 11 remains a tomb displaying some of the horrific events that Vault Tech put on its inhabitants. And the sad tragedy of the tale was that if they What's had up with the bugs, told though? the full truth by the Overseer behind the experiment at the beginning, and if they had all joined together, all of the residents could still be alive, and have that freedom the Vault was going to reward them with in the end. Vault 12 was another vault that advertised itself as being a game changer and a place where humanity could thrive, but underneath hid a horrible experiment on its inhabitants. Vault 12 was constructed under the sprawling metropolis of Bakersfield and was said to be built with every amenity in mind for the I keep on thinking the rats are raccoons. Said to be fitted with the They're so big <laughs> compared to people. System, which would be able to take even the waste located in the sewers and convert it into refreshing, drinkable water, able to deliver over 15,000 gallons every day. If you were to sign up to this vault, you would receive the Pressed Vault Suit Award for your efforts. But on the 23rd of October 2077, when the bombs fell, it became apparent to the citizens of Bakersfield... Wait, they had power the armor before been the bombs off. dropped? Desperate I thought survive, they, they would came out there. into Vault 12, forcing themselves past others to guarantee their survival. However, once all the residents were in, the true nature of this vault came into effect. Oh, no. The vault door did not shut, which was planned by vault -Tec. The idea behind Bro, this vault was to experiment really? on the dwellers and see how they coped under That's the evil. effects of radiation. As the bombs hit, the radiation from them flooded into Vault 12, coating everyone in there. Those who were able to survive the events that took place would be heavily ghoulified by the radiation and forever changed by Ooh. it. By 2083, the survivors I heard that those guys have an infinite lifespan. The, the ghouls. However, those that stayed within Vault 12 went but I don't know if I want to live for an eternity looking like that. Of Bro needs the looks max. Holy! Looks like Nemesis. The Acropolis would continue to survive going into the next few decades, with it being a safe haven for all those mutated by the nuclear war. Whilst the ghouls now feel safe in their city, it is pretty clear that Vault 12 was one of the most barbaric experiments vault Tech could do to its population. And now a vast number of ghouls bear their scars of the horrors of this past organization. How is Bro even still living? <laughs> Vault right. 13 was like Vault 12 in the it sense can't that it get any worse advertised than that. itself as having an endless supply of pure water that the inhabitants could gain access to. This was all thanks to its location within the scenic mountainous region of South California. Vault 13 was one of the most ambitious vaults created by Vault Tech, which started in 2063 and finished in 2069. The vault would also be heavily protected being located under 3.2 million tons of soil, which was 200 Damn. feet of thick 
thickness. It was also designed to hold 500 occupants in 100 comfortable quarters with a maximum of 1,000 occupants with hot bunking and double quarter assignments. Vault 13 was also one of the most expensive vaults costing the American government over $645 billion, 150% over their original budget of four. This sounds like somewhere I want, <laughs> I would want to go. Seen as a control vault, it was actually another experiment vault, but not Damn. nearly as bad as the previous Damn. ones. The experiment here was to keep the vault dwellers locked up for 200 years to see what happened. 200 the years. Under prolonged isolation. However, this experiment was to fail as the overseer needed to find a new way to get water for its vault dwellers. After their vault's water chip began to fail before the year of 2161. Without this water chip, the purification system that was helping these vault dwellers stay alive would fail, meaning they could not live there anymore. They Damn. needed to find a new one if they were to survive. Overseer Jack Oren had no choice but to send out a search party to find one, breaking vault Tech's experiment. But by 2161, however, the chip completely broke and forced the vault into a state of emergency, with the vault dwellers only having 150 days worth of water. Did they break left. out? Venturing out of the vault, the unknown person oh, they known did. as the vault dweller would be able to salvage a chip from the Necropolis Vault 12, as well as discover the being known as the Master. The Overseer couldn't have the Master and his forces learning about their vault, so once again sent the Vault Dweller back to deal with the Master at the Cathedral, successfully killing him. <laughs> they hit the self-destruct button. <laughs> Finally returning to the Vault, however, the Overseer would cast the Vault Dweller out to preserve the Vault's true experiments. But this turned all the other Vault Dwellers against the Overseer, leading many to leave the Vault in outrage. This also Damn, led the RIP. Overseer to being imprisoned, tried, and sentenced to death. As the Vault Dwellers from Vault 13 continued on now within the Wasteland, they would set up the town of Orio and would set up Vault 13 as a shrine to their hero to uphold the memory of them and the actions they had done to save their lives. As life continued within Vault 13, they would get a message on their new Vault computer stating it was time to leave the Vault. However, as they emerged, the Dwellers were attacked and enslaved by two Enclave Vertibird assault squads. In that May would be terrifying. The Enclave would continue on and would go on to deploy a unit of intelligent death claws to nah! actions and patrol the nearby area for strength. How do you tame However, one of those guys? refused to take their orders and turned Vault 13 into their home. Here they would set up a den he for don't them bite. Kirith, don't worry. and took in various humans death as their inhabitants. Most accepted their presence. However, few attempted to take out the death claws and eventually Frank Horrigan of the Enclave invaded Vault 13 and wiped out all of the death claws and humans inside. After the Enclave's involvement, no one remained in Vault 13, and it is unknown what the future holds for this once monument of Vault Tech creation. It is unknown, but it is likely that it is owned and run by the NCR, but it is clear that the Vault 13's history has been filled with betrayal and death, and whoever runs it now might not be safe from outside forces wanting to control So they're kind of, the they're kind of pinched. If they go outside, they're dead. If they stay inside, they're dead. Vault 15, one of the most significant my Minecraft this list dirt shack. A vast of the <laughs> we'll see fallout, including the incredibly powerful New California Republic. This vault was actually one of the few vaults that had an incredibly smooth construction and suffered no delays. This was okay. yet again another experiment vault, and its experiment. Dude, how many how many actual experiment vaults compared to normal vaults were there? And cultures to see how they reacted to being in the same small environment as one another. Vault Deck would then monitor their interactions and see how quickly it would fall or even thrive in the 50 years it had planned to stay sealed for. However, 50 as the years. Bomb failed, the vault lost all contact with is the it outside, horrible? and all the other vaults, meaning the experiment could not be monitored. As the years went oh, on, no. the vault continued to deteriorate and its population became extremely overcrowded by 2097, leading to even more poor living conditions. Conflict was inevitable, and in the spring, the situation exploded. A schism arose among Amongst the dwellers as the vault was finally opened. Most of the dwellers marched out, stripping the vault of all its important resources and equipment, including the garden of I wouldn't do that. creation kit. But one group remained within the vault, trying to live off the bare minimum the vault had left. Those who left formed into separate groups, the most significant one of these being the village of Shady Sands, created by the Bro game. has the a unibrow. Damn. Into Damn. Tribes such as the Khans, Jackals, I guess grooming isn't their number one priority. 
husband for years on end. Vault 15 remained in operation for a while, being inhabited by the remaining dwellers. However, not long after no way in game, power, that's oh, it's a hole in the ground. Okay, because of it was abandoned with no one inhabiting the vault, it started to deteriorate over the years, with its second and third levels completely collapsing. After the NCR formed, the vault was somewhat left alone because of the salvaging rights made between the NCR and other parties. Eventually, it was inhabited by a group of wastelanders who just needed a place to live. The wastelanders settling here believed the lies of the new Khans, who told them that they would rebuild the vault and provide them with shelter, food, and water. But hearing that they were being lied to mm. by the new Khans, the settlers would strike a deal with the President Tandy and the NCR, oh, yucky. which would allow the NCR access to Bro, the vault seen and some the things with annexation, education, Rule number one, don't trust with anyone all done, the NCR at all. Apocalypse or non-apocalypse. Don't. And became productive members of society. Vault 15, however, would remain a memory of the past, a place where all of these factions once lived during the Great War. Sadly, Vault 17. Vault oh 17. no. However, it is known that some of the vault dwellers who inhabited it are still alive, living out within the Mojave Wasteland. I don't know if I From call that know, alive. Vault 17 was a fine place to live up until 2155, where the Master's faction Unity invaded the vault, capturing the inhabitants and subsequently turning them into super mutants. After the Master's passing, only three members of Vault 17 are said to be alive. Those being Lillian, Marie Bowen, Becky, mm. and Jimmy. It was said that Lily lived in the vault until the age of 75 where they were so this was the bdsm one into night King. damn maybe one day we will get to witness that's what rough happened within vault 17 or get to go back to see what has happened to it since 2155 but for now it is just a mystery vault I like the little flower though. Nice touch. Tale of two hearts, vault 19. Literally. Laying out within the Mojave Wasteland, this vault would be located above a parking lot. Venturing down, the vault would be segregated into two different colored sections, red and blue. And once assigned to one of those sectors, the inhabitants would have limited contact with the other half. Oh, uh, red v blue. Only vault Halo inspired. Overseers. Obviously one only for the real red ones sector, know. And one for the blue sector. The main experiment of this vault was to test the inhabitants' paranoia. Whilst they lived there the citizens would be exposed to different forms of psychological factors that would make them feel like something was constantly wrong this would be through non-chemical that is non so bad means, with one child stating in his terminal that it might be subliminal messaging as he and his friends could hear high-pitched noises throughout their time within the volume, nah the bro get me out get me out get me out get me out now it on the other sector of the vault some stated that they were hearing noises feeling unusual drafts of air from vents as well as seeing the lights blinking patterns like some sort of code. For so long, the residents blamed it on the other side, but the truth was it wasn't them. It was, in fact, the overseers at the direction of vault -Tec, with some also believing the vault doctors were involved as well. By the 23rd century, this vault is now void of its original inhabitants, with no real sign as to what exactly They were turned there. into it lizard is people. That their paranoia took over completely and caused them to kill one another. It is also believed Damn. that it could be the water filtration system. No lizard are people them, or that the geckos broke through from the sulfur <laughs> the geckos the but despite the unknown whereabouts of the vault dwellers it is known that during the events of the ncr expansion some convicts from the ncr correctional facility had escaped their capture led by samuel cook and discovered this hidden vault seeing it was completely abandoned the powder gangers would set up here and look to rebuild their forces so they could venture out i'd be and so scared to find a vault now, that is the unopened of vault 19 and then open it or maybe down to their own paranoia caused by the overseers and vault Tech's horrible red versus blue experiment so many of these are experiments vault located within 21 21 21 21 once a safe haven for the vault dwellers now a hotel within new vegas that is a main source the of gambling vault house. vault 21 was actually <laughs> set out to be a really great place to live but once again it had an experiment that took place there this one being a bit we off. put vault 21 made sure that everyone within the everyone in the vault equal to one another oh so god so am i right the vault's layout was perfectly symmetrical to show that everything must be balanced. wait am i right the one difference with 
Everyone in the vault. If anyone had a we're gamblers. Anyone, the only way they could solve their problems would be through gambling. Oh this my God! Was being I was right. The chosen representative winner. Would There's earn no the right way. To dispute as wished by the collective. 21, 21, 21. Within the vault, and actually a lot of their problems were solved, and it always kept their equality going throughout their years living there. However, in 2274, Robert House contacted the residents at Vault 21, offering them the chance to help rebuild Vegas back to its glory days. Most of the vault dwellers did not want to accept this offer from the house, as they liked the way they had been living in their safe haven. However, a small minority of the residents did want to take that offer. Because of this, the ones wanting to take the offer challenged those How do they get money, though? Isolated. After playing a few hours of blackjack, those who wished to venture outside won the game and went on to accept House's offer. As they told Mr. House they had accepted his offer, he immediately ventured into the vault, stripping it of all its technology and resources and used it to rebuild the strip. After doing this, Mr. House ordered them to fill the vault with concrete, but thanks Damn. to the request of Sarah and Sheldon Weintrap, set up a hotel in the upper levels to help House gain more of an income from his new Vegas empire. Most of the vault dwellers of Vault 21 ventured out to live new lives Lore of Vegas. and forgot of their past within the vaults, most notably one man living in Good Springs known as Doc Mitchell. Vault 21 is a good tale of an equal society going well for many years. However, ultimately, in the end, one lesson can be learnt from it. No matter how equal you think you are, the house always wins. Rigged. Vault 22. Oh no. Continuing on into the Mahabay no experiment, Western please. Vault 22, one of the most unique but terrifying vaults in all of Fallout. Oh, this vault no. was originally designed as a green vault, a place that would focus on sustaining plant life and experimenting on new species of greenery. Most of these experiments would be run of the mill. However, one that would be most successful would be the vault's undoing. During their time here, the vault dwellers running the experiments would be donated a fungus by a defense Radiated mushroom. This would be known as the Bulvaria Modicana, which was a fungus used to be a form of pest control. When the spores hit the body of the host, it would take over, colonizing the body, and eventually would Why be would they put to that in a vault functions. with people? However, the problem with the fungus was that it reanimated the body and continued oh, yeah. to control it. Originally developed by the scientists- I drink the chlorophyll. How, how could you tell? Gardens in Big Mountain, the scientists would begin using it during and after- It's the good for your skin. War. After initially using it, fungal spores would begin spreading throughout the vault, infecting in all the population. Isolating one of the first infected scientists, Dr. Harrison Peters, the others would watch as it took over his body, killing him from the inside out, and then reanimating him and turning him into an extremely aggressive host. Eventually, the spores took over pretty much the whole vault, turning the deceased human scientists into spore carriers, killing anything in their path and blending in with the plants within the labs to surprise their foes. By 2096, a party of 118 survivors made it out of the vault and made their way for the Zion Canyon. As the survivors tried to live their lives out there within the wide open wasteland, the vault itself fell into disrepair, overrun by- Oh no, they left it open though. Occasionally scavengers ventured into the vault to look for salvage, but would be overrun by the wildlife and taken by the spores. Signs outside of the vault would display warnings for anyone who made it there and wanted to look inside, but the greenery of the environment was appealing and the almost plants kill to see what was inside. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going in there. Vault 27. Sadly, once again, Vault 27 is a very unknown vault that has only been mentioned in traveling. However, it is said that this vault had a pretty horrific experiment. That being, Bro. the vault was deliberately overcrowded to see how people reacted to these close quarters. 2,000 oh, no. people were assigned to enter this vault, but the vault only had room for 1,000 inhabitants, meaning that those who entered here to escape the bombs were in for an extremely claustrophobic experience. Get me out, get me out. I take this vault with a pinch of salt because whilst it has been mentioned in the games, it is not 100% whether this law is true or not and may not be canon as of yet. But it is believed that Vault 29 oh, nothing horrible. is another experimental okay. vault where only those who are under the age of 15 are allowed to gain access. No. The experiment created by the scientist known as Derek Greenway, most of the parents were either accidentally redirected to other vaults or were in the early stages of health conditions that would no doubt cause them 
and to die soon after entering the vault. Vault 29 would also be controlled by a Zax supercomputer, which would be used to raise children with the aid of robotic Oh, helpers. that's they would not be cool. Educated in a primitive culture and then released into a controlled environment once reaching maturity. Explaining his plans to Diana, the human brain connected to a powerful computer, Greenway wanted to see what her opinion was on the matter at hand. Diana, however, was appalled by this and said that although it was intriguing, it was morally wrong on so many yeah. levels. She exclaimed that it needed to be scrapped, but Greenway refused. Because of this, Diana took it upon Buddy, herself to this is like a more advanced version of chat Diana GPT would take of a helping me out and aimed it at Vault 29, transmitting a series of security codes to the Vault Zax unit. She would gain control of it and raise the children in a way that was seen in her eyes as morally correct. Eventually, the children would go on to set up the village of twin mothers on top of the vault and set up the religion that worshipped the nature goddess. Diana would continue to maintain the vault through her robot workers as well as protect all of her children to make sure her image of a goddess was preserved. By 2253, the vault itself had ceased working. However, thanks to Diana's intervention, the vault itself is still a holy place for the inhabitants of Twin Mothers. I don't know about that one. Oh, 34. Vault 34 More gecko is a people. Vault where if cool. You pick the gun nut perk in your character's creation, Not looking for any insurance. We love to live here to some extent. Here, the vault armory was massively overstocked with weapons and ammunition, and every dweller was able to access it at any time. Along with that, it also had a ton of amenities, such as a fully sized swimming pool, which came at the cost of. Oh, that looks space. fun to for swim the first in. century, the vault was working exactly as planned. The vault was becoming extremely overpopulated, and violence was sprouting up. But in 2230, large groups of residents started to suggest that reproductive rights should be limited. Because of this suggestion, violence got worse throughout the population. To control this, the overseer stated that if this continued, all weapons would be confiscated. However, this did not help and a vast amount of dwellers left the vault and settled within the Nellis Air Force Base, labeling themselves Damn. as the Boomers. The Overseer couldn't the let this boomers? get worse, and because of it installed an armory lock on his terminal. But the dwellers were getting tired of this Overseer's rule and were angry at the limitations being put on them. The Overseer oh, in response yucky. set up guards on any exit and secured all doors to make sure no one else could leave the vault. On top of this, he also sealed away the armory so no one could access it anymore. Fights continued, however, as the dwellers were desperate to get to the armory. Eventually, there were not enough guards to protect the vault's key resources from the angry dwellers. Whilst the overseer remained in control, he now had another problem. The vault was now leaking radiation, and this was affecting the yeah. technicians in the area, such as Chris Haversum, who was convinced he was becoming a ghoul. Luckily for Haversum, he was able to leave the vault, but for the rest, the radiation levels grew more and more, which led to mass violence amongst the people. Can you just Eventually choose to leave these vaults? More radiation filtered Seems like vault. it's Pretty easy to dip. Wiping out most of the dwellers and turned a lot of them into feral ghouls. Some of the dwellers did survive though and did not turn into ghouls. However, instead, they were trapped within the southern section of the vault due to a bomb being planted in the pool, exploding and causing the doors to automatically seal. By 2281, <sighs> what's up with bombs and these there, guys? Praying someone will come to save them. No one's coming. I'm sorry. Try to break it to you. We Is that a ping off our pong table? For this video with three that are sadly some of the smaller vaults unknown to us as of yet. Our first is Vault 36. This vault's main experiment was believed to be to see how the residents responded to terrible foods during their time there. The only notable thing about this vault was that the British cuisine within it were designed so that they only produced thin, watery gruel for their residents. <laughs> the idea of being fed only this for the rest of your life would most likely cause you to become highly irritated and eventually a aggressive to others around you as you lack basic nutrients, eventually causing a lot to most likely starve or kill one another as they are so Quit your whining. forms of food. Vault 42 is quite similar in this aspect, but instead of food, it was light provided. In Vault 42, the experiment was to see how vault dwellers responded to being in really dimly lit living situations. This vault was only being lit by 40 watt bulbs. Nothing Damn. more, nothing less. This meant that dwellers would be roaming around in almost pitch black conditions, leading most to paranoia as they are in a constant state of darkness. This would most likely increase aggression amongst the population and drive some to go outright insane. 
insane, never knowing what time of day it was. And finally, we end on Vault 43 for now. I'd like this to think they'd one of the most get night vision vaults of all time. over but time. The dwellers were smart, could probably overcome the obstacle and live a pretty all right life. This vault would be inhabited by 20 men, 10 women, and of course, because why not, one big panther that would no why? doubt be extremely hungry. How they got the panther why? in there without the dwellers knowing, I don't know. And what they wanted to achieve from this experiment is a complete mystery and quite obvious what's going to happen. But no doubt if you went into this vault, you would most likely be eaten within moments by this vicious beast. However, I still personally think if they are smart enough, they could lure it into a room, seal the doors, and then continue to live in harmony. Humans are smart and with 30 is that it right there? sure they could tackle this obstacle. Obviously, depending on what else is in that vault. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, 43 is 20 Why men, though? 10 women, Why? and of course, a panther. Vault 51. Vault 51 looks like your standard run-of-the-mill vault. However, unlike the other vaults, this vault was not assigned an overseer when it was first sealed shut in 2077. Instead, Vault 51 was fitted with a Zax supercomputer, which was originally put in as a way to use its computing powers to work out who the best candidate would be to run the role of overseer. This vault was then inhabited with 52 residents at first, with one being Sergeant Robert Baker, who was assigned as an assistant to Zax to help teach the computer what a truly leader looked and behaved like, and how to determine who was the best candidate for the role. Robert Baker, when helping the Zacks, tried suggesting that the computer do this appointment through the democratic election process to honor the American way of doing things. Zacks instantly agreed, however, stating it would be their first- Are these shots from the game? Sergeant Baker a bit worried about its true intention. That's crazy if it the is. the democratic process was a failure, as all the residents voted for themselves. The vault dwellers then tried a republic style of government, which also failed, which led the Zacks to the conclusion that voting was pointless and it would terminate elections in the future and go with another process. Baker at this time was adamant that a true leader would step forward as that was what a leader would do in a time of crisis. This however was a terrible thing to tell the Zacks as it assumed the residents needed a crisis to show their true potential. Oh, no. Because of this line of thinking the Zacks would create crises to test the residents to see who the true leader was. By this point the vault factions had started to form and the vault was becoming extremely hostile. The Zacks started creating crises to panic the residents such as forcing the higher class citizens into extremely cramped conditions with only the clothes on their back. After more and more things were set up by the Zacks such as video game machines being tampered with to benefit some and disadvantage others, mass shootings and other crimes were occurring within the vault as people tried desperately to survive and be better than the rest. Baker by this point was outraged at what the Zacks had done and what it was continuing to do to its residents and stormed out of the vault. But the Zacks continued. After a few years of constant trials by the Zacks, causing distrust amongst one Yeah, you can just there dip was out of the vault. Dweller remaining, a man named Reuben Gill. If I notice shit hitting the fan, the overseer of vault I'm 51. dipping. But immediately the Zacks became disappointed with Reuben's role as overseer and started locking him out of areas within the vault, including the security room. After years of depression being left on his own, Reuben resorted to alcoholism. But now the year was 2102 and the vault of vault 76 had now opened and the Zacks saw an opportunity to find a new leader. It removed Reuben as overseer immediately and forced him to participate in the trials once again. Not wanting any part in this cycle once again, Reuben distracted the Zacks and escaped from the vault in a shipping crate. His mission was to finally take out Zacks, trying desperately to communicate with anyone within the area that might seek out vault 51. However, for the Zacks, it continued to look out for that next overseer, opening the vault doors and testing anyone who came in, pitting dwellers against each other in the test of may the best person win. Every test Everyone's just going to die. Only one could become the overseer. As of 2102, the Zax still lives, testing all those brave enough to venture into this attractive vault within the Appalachian forest. Vault 53. vault 53 is a relatively unknown vault with its location being somewhat of a mystery, only being mentioned in passing. Vault 53 has a pretty simple yet infuriating experiment put on the vault dwellers. In this vault, all the equipment within it would break down every few months or so. Whilst the equipment could be easily fixed, every month it would break again, creating this cycle that was incredibly frustrating for the residents. Imagine living every day knowing that something was going to break and every time you fixed it, it was just going to break 
make again in a few weeks. To be honest, it just sounds like every Adobe product or 343 Halo game. Eventually, it will drive you mad. And for these vault dwellers, if they didn't fix it, the whole vault would most likely just fall. Damn. Vault 55 and 56 are also extremely unknown vaults with no known location as of yet. These vaults were lumped together by Vault Tech in a sort of betting experiment to see which one fell first. Vault 55's main experiment was that all entertainment tapes were removed, meaning the vault dwellers had to come up with their own forms of entertainment. Okay, now that's going. that's it would maddening. Be an extremely boring existence, but if you're not fussed about that sort of thing and see your own company or other people's company as good enough, then you'll probably be fine within this vault. Vault 56, on the other hand, also had its tapes removed, apart from one type. This tape was of a particularly bad comic actor. The vault dwellers would only be able to watch these tapes to keep them entertained. And apparently this comic actor was so bad that sociologists predicted In modern times, it'd be Amy Schumer. Fall before Vault 55. Quite honestly, these vaults don't sound that bad to live in, but I have to admit, I'd rather be in a place where there are no entertainment tapes than a vault where it's just playing the same Adam Sandler movies over and over and over again until True. the day I die. Located out within the ash heap within Appalachia is Vault 63, which is located underground hidden away within a small building. This vault is extremely mysterious, said to be opened within the year of 2102, however, for some reason was never opened, meaning its contents are completely sealed along with knowledge of its experiments. It was believed that inside the vault itself the reactor was overheating, which had potentially caused the vault to go into crisis mode, maybe killing the residents, however that is completely unknown. If the vault is ever unlocked to the rest of the world, oh, those man. who venture in may have to take up the incredibly hard task of fixing the reactor whilst facing up against those inside if they have been turned into the scorched or ghouls. As of right now, sadly, Vault 63 remains a mystery. I hate the unknown. And hopefully it will open soon. If not, it could be sealed shut for well over 200 more years. Probably some of the most spoken about vaults throughout the world, however vaults 68 and 69 are unfortunately hidden away and their location is pretty unknown. Both 68 and 69 had the same experiment in mind, but were the polar opposite of each other. Vault 68 consisted of 1,000 dwellers with 999 men and one lone woman, whereas vault no! 69 consisted of another 1,000 dwellers with 999 women and one lone man. Yeah! The idea of this vault may seem appealing. Yeah, first, especially being that lone man. The idea of being the only one of your sex amongst the whole stadium of the other sex would be extremely daunting. And if the only way of continuing civilization one is at a time, you, ladies, one at a time, lone man are in for a horrible time and would probably get the punishment of death by Schnoo Schnoo. Yeah. What are you, gay? The last of the small <laughs> vaults for now is Vault 70, located out within Utah. This vault really wasn't anything special, with the only thing being mentioned about it being that the jumps I wonder how it went, though. failed after just six months. This meant that after six months, all new clothing provided would be stopped, and the vault dwellers would probably have to just deal with the clothing they entered with, as they would not be able to get any more. It was said that in 2062, however, over a decade before the Great War, Mormon congregations came together to purchase places within Vault 70 to set up their communion there. For over a century, this community lived within Vault 70 and were finally released to the world in 2190, where the inhabitants would go on to found the town of New Jerusalem using their three Garden of Eden creation kits. To this day, sadly, the Mormon community in New Jerusalem has been taken out by angry tribals, raiders, and other attackers and had to set up a new Damn, town is that a within two the ruins of pig in the back? Utah and called it New Canaan. It is unknown what has happened That's a good guard Vault dog you got there. Maybe some of the Mormons still live there, or maybe it has just been left to decay. Maybe one day we will be able to see how the Mormons lived within the vault and how they dealt with the fact that they had no jumpsuit extruders. Seventy-five.
Vote 75 is Please no experiment. one of the more barbaric uses of a vote that votes Oh, had no, out. come on. Before the war, there was a national emergency where people all over the country were concerned about what would happen to their children when nuclear war happens, if it happens. Because of this, Vote Tech and the local government of Massachusetts set up Vote 75 and placed it beneath the Molden Middle School, making sure those children at school had a quick place to evacuate to if the time came. All seemed good. This vote was encouraging families to sign up, authorizing special discounts and subsidies for those qualifying families who had children under the age of 15, attending that school and lived in Molden. However, the true purpose for this vote was made by the United States military. The experiment here was to turn the children into battle-ready super soldiers who would obey any order given to them. This would be no. done by selective breeding, genetic modification, and hormonal treatments. When the day came when the bombs hit, all those who qualified for the vault entered its premises. When they got there, the children under the age of 17 were taken to one side to meet the overseer. Those over the age of 17, such as the parents, would be taken to the holding area and executed by the security staff. What? This fate also hit those children who refused to be separated from their parents. Only strong children could pass these vault tests. Throughout the children's time here within this vault, they would be subjected to intense training regimes, strict diets, as well as a lesson on the art of war and simulated combat to help develop their physical traits and combat skills. The only way out of these tests was to have a cardiac arrest or to die during their time here. Damn! If the child were to pass their time within the vault and reach the age of 18, they would be thrown out of the vault, being labeled as a graduation, and would be told to aid the surface by re-establishing civilization. Anyone who achieved an excellent or superior score in these tests would be used as the basis of the experiments and would be harvested for their genetic makeup to be used on their next generation of test subjects who were created within vitro fertilization. Those who did not achieve those skills would be taken out of the population and killed by the staff. However, as the experiments went on and on, eventually the scientists would make those children into extremely adapted soldiers who were far more powerful than them with incredible gun skills and lightning speed. However, an insurrection was to take place at the hands of James S. and Rohit L., two of the residents of Vault 75, not long after the final subjects were made. Recruiting the other residents of the vaults, they all rallied together making sure all the children were safe and executed the scientists who were far weaker compared to these enhanced children soldiers. As this, they should. The children were free from the horrors of Vault 75 and the experiments and creation of the super soldiers made from children was no more. It is still unknown where those children went, but for Vault 75, it is now inhabited by the Gunners as they push through the Commonwealth, expanding their influence. Despite their activity within this vault, the horrific events of the past are still present as children's toys litter all of the rooms. A horrific tale of how Vault Tech exploited children and turned them into killing machines, or killed them if they were not deemed as worthy candidates. Vault 76 A vault mentioned all over America that was meant to be something truly special, however didn't really live up to its name in the long run. Vault 76 was set out to be the vault that celebrated America's history. It was designed as the official vault of the Tricentennial by Vault Tech and had the tagline of Vault Tech Salutes America. This vault was meant to be the best minds in all of America, capable of housing 500 residents, including students from Vault Tech University, military members, and former White House Chief of Staff. As the vault closed in 2077, Vault 76 had some of the best protection throughout all of the vaults, with their security team ready to take take out any intruder that wasn't part of the Vault 76 family. Strict laws were in play as well to make sure all the residents of the vault played their part in keeping the society active and productive. Okay. If someone like was it. to break laws or cause trouble, the overseer was able to lock down each of the rooms and imprison that person who caused trouble. Ensuring compliance was key to the goal of this vault and was one of the best examples of a control vault. Reclamation Day was soon approaching the residents of Vault 76, the time where they could venture out and help help rebuild America. However, in 2100, there was a problem. The vault was now over capacity and all its resources were struggling because of it. Some of the residents had also been put under disciplinary lockdown as well, causing trouble for the overseer. On top of this, not a lot of the residents really wanted to venture out into the wasteland to fight against cannibalistic mutants, which added more problems to the overseer's 
role. Eventually, the residents were convinced that venturing back to the surface was a positive thing. And by 2102, Reclamation Day was here, which was met with relief from all parties. A party was held the day before, allowing residents to have alcohol, food, and celebrate amongst their peers. After a long night of partying, the residents ventured out into the wasteland to rebuild Appalachia after 25 years of chaos. Residents weren't issued fire Hell arms yeah. as the overseer denied them. Stay hydrated. They just gave the residents the standard survival packages and were told to run fast and far away from Vault 76 and complete their missions. As all of the Vault 76 residents left, the vault became useless. It had fulfilled its task and all of the operations inside ceased working just 24 hours later. This included air circulation, forcing the residents to leave if they were thinking of staying a bit longer. To this day, the banners of Reclamation Day as well as balloons surround the entrance of Vault 76 as its residents are out there trying desperately to rebuild America. They all get wiped out. Friends and fighting against terrifying creatures. Vault 76 would be remembered as one of the first vaults to open since the Great War and the start of the rebuilding process. Yeah, no, that's a W vault right there. Oh, no. I don't Vault like that. I don't is like a bit that. Of a weird yet somewhat terrifying tale of a single man who had been left to himself within the vaults. A this single was man. Joke, Vault Tech wanted to see how this man behaved, stuck on his own with one thing: a box of hand puppets. As the man searched the box, no! as P13X U.S. government issued puppet ration, he would find an assortment of puppets. However, left them thinking they were useless. For the first month, this lone vault dweller had suffered serious depression due to being on his own as well as overwhelming panic, believing this to all be a huge mistake. The Wilson One year method. And three months later, after the door was sealed, this vault dweller would eventually open the puppet box again to entertain himself. However, one puppet seemed to be speaking to him, that puppet being a vault boy. At first, it seemed fine, and the vault dweller came up with storylines for each of the puppets. However, it's one the day, king's the puppet birthday. King was killed, and the vault boy was saying it was them. They were the ones who killed him. Now that they were both criminals to the other puppets, the vault boy said they should leave the vault that night. Stepping out of the vault that next morning, the vault dweller and his vault boy puppet would go on to explore the lands on the back of a fire ant, speaking to another vault dweller who was heavily ghoulified and tell him his own story. However, as time passed, the two were caught and tied up by a group of slavers. Threatening the vault dweller, the puppet stated the vault dweller had killed before. Not believing their claims, the slavers turned their back and then Suddenly, the Vault Dweller and his puppet massacred all of the slavers in the area, spreading a message all over How? the wasteland. Beware the puppet man. Vault 77 is a creepy tale of how one man was driven to utter insanity and because of it is now a paranoid schizophrenic who will kill anyone in his way. That makes sense. To do I would too. Through his puppet Vault Boy. I'm borderline right now. On the verge of breaking. Vault 79. Vault 79's contents were hidden to the world for a long time, located within a small shack out in the middle of nowhere, with access to it through a locked off elevator. The original occupation number for this vault was 120 dwellers. That number was chosen because of the vault's location within the mining area, and 120 being the atomic number of gold, which the vault would also be used to store and protect when in operation. The vault was under the command of the military forces from Fort Knox, with the sole purpose of rebuilding in the United States of America economy. Whilst this vault was incredibly hidden from How'd the rest of society with security surrounding the grounds, it wasn't long before its secrets were revealed by a few of the soldiers working near there. In July 2072, some of the soldiers working there stole millions of dollars and went gambling in Las Vegas. The rest of the forces found this information and a shootout occurred within the Ultralux Casino to silence them and take back what they stole. Only one survivor remained, that being Sergeant Catherine Montgomery, who had been staying within the Lucky 38. Here she escaped the city after being labeled as a Chinese spy and ventured to Texas. However, sadly, the boat she was escaping on was destroyed by the USS Wade. However, all of this commotion led to more people seek out what was at the hidden vault. However, anyone who went to seek out this vault were killed in the process, with Flavia Stabo, another interested party, being buried Stabo? in a shallow grave near the vault's entrance for trying to get into it. I wonder how he died. As 
the war came, the vault, like all the others, was sealed up with its insides waiting for the message from the outside that the gold deposits were needed. But during their lockdown point, a mutiny took place, being led by a Secret Service agent nicknamed Shorty, killing most of the other inhabitants. By 2103, rumors of this vault and its treasure drew people everywhere as they wanted the gold for themselves. As the vault was finally raided, those who took part in it would be rewarded by the remnants of the vault's Secret Service, with them also being able to tell the tale of what was in Vault 79. This vault was one of the most secret vaults throughout all of America. However, now the tale of its raid lives throughout Appalachia. Vault 81 Vault 81 is a bit of a misleading vault and is like many of the other ones on this list and the last. At first when entering this vault would look like a standard control vault that would be a nice peaceful existence yeah. for the vault dwellers living there. However this wasn't the case. In fact Vault 81 had an experiment taking place here that was not told to the residents once again. The sole purpose of this vault was to research diseases and antibodies with an emphasis on potential mutations in oh, heavy no. radiation. Here Vault Tech isolated the 96 residents within the vault from the experiments taking place, using them as guinea pigs for their trials. So many processes were put in place to make sure the vault dwellers were not contaminated or spread what they had to the outside world. All was set up for Vault Tech to make sure these experiments would go exactly how they planned. However, they made one big mistake. That was assigning Dr. Oliviette as the overseer. Dr. Oliviette disagreed massively with these experiments and went against Vault Tech's ultimate plans, stating that if human trials were to take place, they would blow the whistle on what was truly going on. However, Dr. Olivier realized if she did blow the whistle, this experiment was far higher than they thought, having financial investors from the federal government, meaning it would be much harder to expose them. As the Great War came, Dr. Olivier got the call to alert the scientists. However, she refused to do it, to make sure the experiments didn't go ahead. However, there was one problem. Three more scientists had arrived in the vault asking questions about the vault drills. These scientists mm. helped the team crack on with their experiments. However, Dr. Olivia kept an eye on them, making sure they didn't get to the human testing part. As it finally got to that stage of the experiment, Dr. Olivia disabled all the delivery systems, cutting off the scientists from infecting the vault dwellers. She also sealed off the access point to the secret part of the vault where the scientists were located, making Damn. sure they could never go on with their plans, also killing the three outsider scientists in the process. Dr. Olivia they became the experiments done however knew that the scientists on the other side would have enough food and water to survive the scientists however continued with their research and used mole rats as their main source of testing as time went past the scientists would eventually die of old age and the sole responsibility of the tests and the cure would lie in the hands of the miss nanny robot named curie by 2204 curie had created the cure meaning the vault's true goal had been achieved at the same time curie became self-aware and patiently waited within the vault hoping that she would get a response from the vault's security or get a new order for her to leave the vault and begin a new line of research. By 2277 the rest of the vault dwellers could not isolate themselves any longer and Overseer McNamara opened the doors for the first time to make trade links as they were quickly running out of resources. This event helped the vault dwellers to make vital repairs to their deteriorating vault as well as bring in more food and medical supplies. However a lot of the vault dwellers detest this decision as they had a very xenophobic mindset, distrusting anyone who stepped foot in their precious home. Mm. By 2287, the vault continued to let in a small selection of individuals to make trade, but still kept isolated from the outside world. Within this year, however, one individual named Bobby DeLuca would discover the secret part of the vault. Man, that the Apple Watch do hit different, though. In, revealing all of the diseased mold rats. Kind of want one. It. Another individual named Austin would be bitten by these diseased rats, leading him to need immediate treatment, forcing someone to go and find the cure the scientists had been working on. Whilst in the end Vault 81's experiments didn't fully go ahead, the secret vault with all its experiments still remains, and with it, a cure to the many diseases the scientists were playing with over the many years they inhabited it. Man. Hold off on the experiments for a little bit. Vault 87 is bit. one of the most significant vaults throughout 
all of America and had a huge effect on the wasteland. Vault 87 was made in 2017. Oh, gotta love having a bonfire in the middle. Equipment such as Cyberbrain version 2.3, a nuclear reactor, and four stasis chambers, as well as housing a Garden of Eden creation kit. The vault did have an original experiment in mind when it was set up. However, as the war waged on, the experiment was changed to study the effects of the forced evolutionary virus on humans. The goal of the scientists was to make a version of the virus that would help create humans that were well adapted to the post-nuclear environment and would label the experiment as the evolutionary experimentation program. The experiment, however, was a total failure and only created oh my God. and inferior mutants, now known as the super mutants. For the most part, the scientists were safe and operations continued as followed. However, as the bombs fell, one fell directly on top of the vault, literally in the land with radiation. After no. this, some of the specimens broke free and started to attack all of the scientists and security forces within the vault. Eventually, the human inhabitants were wiped out by the mutants as the mutants ventured out into the wasteland. Their sole goal now was to preserve their species as they were completely sterile because of the experiments. The mutants would go out of their way to capture humans and subject them to the FEV virus to make more for their society. This would happen for decades as more and more mutants roamed the lands all over America. By 2277, the vault was in a state of disrepair. Maintenance was not taking place and parts of the vault were completely collapsing. Yeah, it's a wrap. Certain areas. On top of that, any human that were to venture into this vault would be hit by overwhelming amounts of radiation that would certainly kill them, especially within the heart of the vault where the Gek lies. Once again, Vault the 87 Gek? is another example of how experimenting on humans for the purpose of war only leads to more problems later down the line. What's the Gek? Vault 88 is really unlike any of the other vaults on this list, as it wasn't actually mm. ever finished before the war. As the war took place in 2077, this <laughs> vault was still under construction near a uranium deposit to make sure there would be a by a uranium. <laughs> okay, all right, for the cool. Future purposes. When the bombs came, more radiation. Most of the workers located here were killed or heavily mutated in the process. Oh the no, he's fine. Fully functional and could not provide them with adequate. Protection. That's what happens After when you eat the liquid the in a glow bombs, stick. The was also completely covered by rubble, meaning that for years its existence was completely hidden, leading some to believe that Vault 88 never existed at all. Eventually it was discovered thanks to some curious raiders as they removed the rubble and tried to gain access through the door. Amazingly, the overseer Valerie Barstow had survived after 200 years, though heavily ghoulified. As the raiders tried desperately to get in, overseer Valerie kept the doors sealed, stating they could not enter as she needed to keep the vault safe so it could one day focus on its experiments. Ultimately, Dr. Stanislav Braun wanted Vault 88 to be Wait, a then how did Bro get in? These prototypes of all forms. They would be tested within Vault 88 on the inhabitants and then moved on to other vaults around the country. The testing of these prototypes would also be under the rules that human lives were expendable and that getting these prototypes out fast was more important. With the vault not being completed before the war, the vault now lies empty, ready to be turned into that vault that was meant to be built before before the bombs fell. Whoever were to enter Vault 88 would be given the opportunity to help save Overseer Valerie, who was trapped under the rubble, clear the rubble from all of the access tunnels, clearing out the feral ghouls out in the process as well, and help her to fulfill her role as Overseer and get those prototypes built and tested on unaware individuals who also want to seek out what Vault 88 has to offer, eventually setting up their own community. Damn. I don't know if I want to live next to that guy. Vault 92. Vault 92 was set up for those obsessed with music. This vault was designed oh. to hold 245 occupants for 100 years. Did they play Ken Carson? Sound Playboy Cardi. Musical instruments and recording gear to make it so that the musical legacy of the little United bit of yeet States on the side ever preserved. Sounds amazing, right? Well, it had a second mission behind it as well, like most of the other vaults. When the vault officially closed on the 23rd of October 2077, the overseer Richard Rubin would use the sounds 
systems to filter white noise throughout the vault that would contain combat suggestions to the humans hearing these noises. The first tests were on the musicians isolated within the sound booths, which worked with great effect as two of the dwellers located within the recording studio formed an inseparable romance. Due to this initial Damn. success, the range of the white noise was extended throughout all of the vaults to make sure it was fully working. The white noise was also accompanied with music to make sure the full broadcast could be spread to everyone and would feel more natural. The experiment worked even better with its effectiveness being noted as 100% with less than 1% margin of error. The scientists were thrilled with what they had found and congratulated each other for the achievement. However, not long after this, the first problem was visible. One musician suddenly went insane, murdering three other dwellers in a bloody rage. This musician had no previous links with violence or mental instability, and it became clear that the white noise could be the cause of this. But the professor yeah. in charge of all this saw 100%. the musician's change as notable for his research. Before he was killed, he showed increased strength, tenacity, and unflinching obedience to orders from authority. But on top of all that, it was also revealed that they had lost all higher cognition and motor control, and were experiencing nausea and dizziness. Eventually, more and more of these vault dwellers were experiencing these same feats. Fatalities were happening all over the vault, and the professor was begging the overseer to abandon the project and restore order within the vault. After a short while, 30% of the vault's population were claimed to be clinically insane, and 35 were dead. The experiment was deemed a failure, and was claimed that the white noise had just turned the humans into mindless brutes. The remaining vault dwellers tried desperately to escape the vault, taking up arms against the others who had lost their minds. But the professor learned the truth of this experiment during this time. That's one they of them right there. The overseer was a crab man. All of it, boosting it into their sleeping quarters at night instead of just the studios. Deeming the overseer to be insane, the professor faced the overseer to hold him accountable for his crimes. To this date, Vault 92 is a crumbling mess with all of its maintenance crews dead. It is flooded and is void of any real human life. What could have been a great place for the vault dwellers where they could make music together and embrace the old world sounds. This place was now a barren littered place. Yeah, it's because of the white noise, 100%. Insane due to the overseer's experiments. It definitely gets better. Vault 94 is located out within the mire within Appalachia. This vault had one goal in mind, to allow humanity the opportunity to be free, walk their own path, and be one with nature. Its main principles were that of faith, non-violence, and communal life in harmony. There you go. Nature. It was also supplied with a ton of resources to restore the bounty of the earth in the hope that one day the residents of this vault would rebuild the belief that humanity is naturally good. After just one year, the vault dwellers of 94 after praying for the victims of the war, opened the vault doors and they ventured out into the wasteland to oh, spread no. the goodwill of men to all they encountered. However, on exit, only one they were year killed and tortured by the raiders of Pleasant Valley, with their bodies being propped up as decorations. The raiders would also go to find that the vault housed a geck, but they were unaware of what it truly was. Because they didn't know what it did, they would go on to blow it up, deeming it dangerous because of how submissive the vault dwellers had been. However, on its destruction, it would blow them up in the process, and with the explosion would lead Damn. the bank to go on to create the whole area of the mere. Ironically, the people of Vault 94 who believed that humanity was good were one of the first group of vault dwellers to be killed once emerging back onto the surface. Damn! Well, they did help okay. create greenery to the wasteland once again, so they did achieve something anyway, even if they didn't technically do it. They thought everyone was good, and they were the first people to get wiped out. Vault 95 was designed for just 75 dwellers, and more specifically for dwellers who were addicted to drugs. This vault was set up to offer those individuals a oh, chance no. to be rehabilitated, as well as sheltered from the upcoming war. Every day, these vault dwellers would have meetings about their recovery, and the dwellers would go through a process of positive reinforcement and encouragement. Who needs to get locked like up in the drug addict recovery thing. vault? By 2082, the vault dwellers were able to become clean, all thanks to the overseer being in a position of their 
therapist to some extent, with their idea of not to be considered a position of power, but rather a position of support and servitude. However, an undercover Vault Tech employee named Gutierrez had a different goal. His plan was to open a secret stash of various addictive chems and alcohol no. sealed inside the living quarters. This was part two of Vault Tech's experiment that was to happen five years after the vault door shut. As the stash of drugs was found, the dwellers went back to their old ways, becoming addicted again and extremely aggressive towards one another, with deaths happening all throughout their community. By 2287, however, the faction of the gunners had set up within the vault after what fighting their thinking? way through and killing all of the remaining dwellers who remained there. The vault is in disrepair and its goal of rehabilitation was completely in ruin. What could have been a great place to give people a second chance was once again ruined by vault Tech and their barbaric experiments. This vault was set up to be like an ark, a place of preservation for wildlife and the flora and fauna of the future. The reason for its setup was to make sure the world could be brought back to its original ways of wildlife and the wasteland could be repopulated by the old world's nature. Within this vault, there was to be a large selection of animals and embryos, 10,000 to be precise, Damn. all stored within cryogenic storage. As the small group of scientists began working, they would monitor the outside world to see its surface conditions and how it affected affected the wildlife. However, as the war came, their new directive came from vault Tech, something that would not go down well with the workers at all. Their new instructions were now to conduct genetic experiments on the fauna and to develop countermeasures for them. Once this Why? was done, they would then have to transfer Why? their findings to an external facility where they would be checked to make sure the workers were hitting their correct weekly quotas made up by the mainframe. The five residents were outraged at the vault Tech member and overseer Eric DeMarcos, stating that this was far too dangerous to mutate over 10,000 animals with such a small group and certainly not what they had signed up for. However, despite Despite Eric apologizing, he went on to say that if they did not meet their quotas, they would ultimately be exterminated. Whilst this helped the workers to get on with their studies, this also hid another vault Tech secret about this vault. That being that after the 250 weeks of work here, regardless of how they did, the residents were to eventually be exterminated with only the overseer being able to leave the facility. As the nah. weeks passed, the scientists got on with their research and noted all the changes made. But by week 142, to, the scientists discovered a brand new mutation when they uncovered a new mysterious entity named X001, contained within the bay only accessed by the automated research system. This new mutation formed from X001 was unlike anything seen before as it spread from petri dish to petri dish in rapid speed. However, only having a small sample of X001 and being unable to access the rest of it, the scientist working on this mutation, Nina, was unable to hit her weekly quota meaning she was to be killed. However, during this process, the overseer had been working for two years on an escape plan. He was also prisoner within this vault. Here, Eric created a virus called the Seraph, which was to override the mainframe computer shutting it down, allowing him to escape the day Hell before the yeah. were due. But unfortunately, on the day of their attempted escape, the mainframe activated superseding protocol Omega and killed all the residents of the vault. Whilst the mainframe regained uh. control, the now mutated creatures had now started to escape the vault, causing cool. the main vault door to become broken. 10,000 in infected in animals in the world. For assistance, the mainframe computer now sends a call all over Appalachia for someone to help resolve the issue. What was once an idyllic vault that could help rebuild the wasteland is now a death trap run by the computer that stopped its residents from escaping by exterminating each and every one of them, allowing the creatures housed there to escape and roam the post-war land. Arguably 101. the most recognizable vault on this list, Vault 101 was a simple vault that looked to be once again a standard control vault. However, this yeah! was not the case. In fact, Vault 101 had an experiment, but an extremely subtle one that not many people noticed, which was as intended. The experiment here was to stay closed indefinitely in order to study the role of the overseer when a vault never opened. This, however, did not benefit the gene pool at all, as it would lead to inbreeding if they were to be isolated for so many years. 
years. It also later on led to the overseer being seen as almost a dictator-like figure, with one of the questions of the GOAT exam showing just how much he liked to control things. This experiment to keep the vault closed forever failed multiple times over the years, however. The first and second overseers of the vault did their jobs perfectly, and the second one even made sure that the vault's mantra was, we are born in the vault, we live in the vault, and we die in the vault. Something that remained in the vault society to this date. However, in 2241, the new overseer went against those rules and favoured outside contact, assembling a team led by Anne Palmer to venture the land and find mutations along the way. Eventually, on the 10th of February 2241, the first team from Vault 101 ventured out and visited the town of Megaton, collecting samples of the outside world to oh, study no. their labs back in Vault 101. By 2258, some of the vault dwellers who ventured out to Megaton returned to Vault 101. However, the overseer that had allowed them to do so had now gone and had been preceded by Alphonse Amadova. This brought about a new age of Vault 101, where it would turn into a police state to make sure no one ever left the vault, returning it to its original plans. During this time, a man named James ventured to Vault 101, seeking shelter with his new child after losing his wife in the birth process. James convinced the overseer that he would be their new physician if he let them in. Eventually, he was allowed entrance and was assigned Jonas Palmer as his assistant. But people were still escaping the vault to head to Megaton, forcing the overseer to take action, scaring people into thinking the outside world was too dangerous and that his voice was the oh, only no. voice of reason. By 2277, society That's where it goes had downhill. to its original ways, fearing leaving the vault and remaining inside as per the original Vault Tech directive. However, in an attempt to bring about clean water for the whole wasteland in what was known as Project Purity, something James's wife had worked with him on, James left his now teenager alone in the vault and escaped to make a dream a reality. This put the whole vault on lockdown with Jonas being killed in the process for helping him escape. In a mass panic, the overseer's daughter, Amata, wakes James's child and tells them they need to escape as well. With no other option, the 19-year-old breaks through and ventures to the surface, becoming the lone wanderer. To this date, Vault 101 is still operational. However, Amata has set up a rebel faction to make changes within Vault 101 and help it interact with the outside world. But whilst doing this, Vault 101 would get contacted by the Enclave, who wanted to gain entrance to the vault. Refusing entrance to the vault, Amata would broadcast a message out onto emergency frequency to the capital wasteland in the hope that maybe the lone wanderer she helped escape Vault 101 will return and yeah. help their once home out from the He's not coming back. overseer who tried to kill their father as well as some of their friends. Vault 106 was one of the fastest constructed vaults in the wasteland, being finished in just five years in December 2069. This vault was to house 107 occupants, with 95 being the test subjects and 12 being the researchers from Vault Tech. The experiment of was said to last for 12 years and three months from the moment. There's only like the three this good vault vaults that you'd want to be in. Mind. This was to pump psychoactive drugs into the circulation system 10 days after the vault door closed. Once this day came, all the procedures took place and the drugs were released into the this is the russian 15, sleep experiment hours. vault residents however were not told about this at all and if they were to complain that something was wrong they would just be told it was fine this gas became deadly and <laughs> they were gaslit a damn lot of vault dwellers became extremely relaxed and in almost comatose states however some became extremely aggressive and behaving bizarrely after a while most of the vault dwellers became highly aggressive believing to see things that weren't there and killing anyone in their way the security team who were told to handle the situation could not take on the highly aggressive individuals and died within the process. As time progressed, these drugs still filtered through the system, creating a purple haze and causing individuals to hallucinate things if venturing through. To this day, the vault is still active, with people attacking one another when in there. But its foundations are collapsing, and it won't be long before it completely falls. But if you were to enter this vault, you would be heavily affected by this drug, seeing things that aren't there, and most likely be attacked by someone else who is in an angered state or become an aggressive yourself yeah i don't know if they're a match for my 45 acp
Vault 108 was a much larger vault than the previous ones in the list, housing around Actually, I don't know. 75 occupants with an estimated runtime of 38 years. With this, it also housed one of the largest armories, which was overstocked by triple the amount as the other vaults, to help with its experiment. This vault's main goal was like that of Vault 51's. It was to study conflict for leadership and power amongst its dwellers. With this, the vault was run by overseer Brody Jones, who had been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer which was said to kill him within 40 months of the experiment's starting date, meaning this role would soon be up for grabs. The vault's power was also said to turn off and malfunction within just 20 years, despite the residents being locked up for 38 years. Due to these factors, a struggle for power took place and a huge gunfight broke out between the residents. After this brutal in-vault war, the vault dwellers now faced a huge problem. Their population numbers were extremely low, and to survive, they had to come up with a plan to expand their population. Here, the Vault Dwellers decided to start cloning an individual to see the outcome. During this process, a man named Gary would be cloned, and each one of his clones would be recorded to see... They just casually the clone each other. Original. That's cool. According their efforts, cool. the Dwellers would find that each clone made, they would get more and more hostile to non-Gary clones, with each one being made becoming more... <laughs> Gary more only Vault. After the 53rd Gary had been made, the Dwellers realized there was no real differences to this new one, and now they had to work out what to do with all the Gary as they were running out of room, leading to some of the dwellers taking some of the clones out and killing them to allow for more space in their labs. However, one more Gary was made. But this time, Gary 54 attacked Dr. Peterson during his examination. After this, it is pretty he certain that the Gary clones rebelled against all of the non-clones, taking over Vault 108 completely. Through their cloning process, however, the clones have lost all sense of communication and can only speak through one word. Gary. As of 2277, mm -hmm. the vault is overrun by Garys, as they will attack anyone that gets close to them. If you were to venture into this vault, you may find yourself overwhelmed by the same man. And the last Gary. word you'll ever hear before you die will be just simply, Gary. Gary. Okay, I didn't think they said it like that. I thought it was like a zombie, like a mindless zombie. Vault 111 was yet again a very simple experiment vault that wasn't located in a very large premises. The most notable thing about this vault was that instead of having a traditional door like most of the vaults on this list, it instead had a giant lift leading down to its entrance for extra protection from the radiation. Going down into the area, the vault would seem like a nice place to live with extremely welcoming scientists and okay. vault security staff. However, as usual, there was another agenda behind it all. This vault was to explore the effects of long term cryogenic stasis on oh, unsuspecting no. test subjects who were residents within Sanctuary Hills and Concord. Because the subjects would be in stasis pods for a long period of time, the scientists would only be there for at least 180 days before being told to evacuate and move to another area where they could monitor them from a distance. However, the staff were also part of this test as they quickly realized that there was no all clear signal coming soon. Supplies were running out and panic was ensuring amongst everyone, leading to the security team mutating against the overseer to Damn. open the door and escape. After a firefight ensued, lots of the staff were killed in the process, with most of the survivors believing to have escaped the vault. As for those in the cryopods, they would remain frozen for over a century or more, waiting to be brought back into the world to face the harsh reality of the Commonwealth Wasteland. However, only one lone individual survived this ordeal, with all the other residents being killed within the pods due to a malfunction and suffocating to death, with one being shot in cold blood right in front of their other the half with the raiders taking the child and disappearing into the commonwealth waste yeah nah yeah nah i'm going after him Vault 112 was a pretty horrible vault to be wound up in. As Another it was one. By the insane sadistic scientist known as Stanislaus Braun. This vault was one of the last vaults to be made by Vault Tech as it finished construction in 2074. 85 residents were said to live within this vault and would be hooked up to a virtual reality world for the no. duration of the vault's experience. No. At first, this would be seen as a pretty unique and fun place to live. Having your own personal VR. This is the evil within, bro. Topia set up by Stanislaus Braun to allow you to live a perfect life for pretty much all of your life. However, the problem 
was Dr. Braun himself. As soon as the residents entered their pods, they were at the mercy of him and his experiments. Dr. Braun would have complete control over their whole world, using them as play dolls to his own sick fantasies without allowing you to leave at all. This would go on for some time, and when Dr. Braun got bored of that utopia, he would then go on to kill the residents and then set up a new one, forcing these people to a life of torture and to be killed over and over again to satisfy one doctor's needs. Eventually, Eventually one of Braun's Vault 112 Utopia worlds would be shut down by the Lone Wanderer as they search for their father James. However, Dr. Braun just about lives still within his VR pod, and if anyone were Wait, to is the main it, character the Lone Wanderer? ...shrivel into dust. How these people have stayed alive so long is beyond a miracle, and probably due to their minds being kept active within the pods. However, it is a life of torture, and maybe shutting down Dr. Braun's Utopia worlds would be better for them than living within this hell. Vault 114 was another vault that never really saw the light of day. Vault Tech tried to create this vault within the Boston Park Street subway station in a mission to cut oh, costs. No. But even though they were saving money, the vault the was New never York one. due to their poor construction contracts. Those in charge of the construction just ended up embezzling funds. The idea behind this vault was to provide a safe shelter for the high ups at the Boston Society who wanted to live out the nuclear devastation in their luxury shelter. Instead, those 120 residents residents would be put in accommodation similar to poor housing, with multiple families per room, Damn. lack of amenities, and poor piece together furnishings. The Basically a New York apartment. from the public and was set out to study human reactions to stress. To this date, the vault was never really used as its construction was never fully completed, with interview tapes littering its overseer's office, telling the story of how vault -Tec were looking for that perfect overseer candidate. It did at one point have some residents within it, but it is unclear where those individuals have gone or if they have died at some point. But as of 2287, a group of trigger men run by the gangster known as Skinny Malone operate within the vault, holding one detective, Nick Valentine, as their hostage. If 114's construction was not surprised, did he have a skeleton hand? Wait a minute. Paradise. But instead, it is now a place of residence for criminals seeking to build their empire and silence those who go against them. Vault 118. Like with Vault 114, Vault 118 was also meant to be set up as a luxury ultra elite hotel to attract the right type of customer from across the land. But unlike 114, 118 was actually set up that way and had a hotel above it to make sure those privileged individuals and VIPs would come and gather there. However, the plan for opening was very different. When the Great War came, the door would open up and allow the population access, picking people from the local world working class population. Once allowed in, the working class population would be escorted through the luxury part of the vaults to see it in all its beauty, but then be assigned to cramped quarters away from that area. No! The would then be separated into two groups. Group A would be the 10 ultra elite individuals who would be allowed special access to everything and would be above the law. Group B would be the 300 working class and will be restricted to just the second wing of the vault. This group would be forced to live in un comfortable and cramped that is horrible food that is horrible what is that limited, and rules and laws to be set in place by group a and robotic staff members the ultimate test here was to see how the two class systems responded to one another monitoring mm -mm. how the working class reacted to being told what to do by people who could do anything they wanted without repercussion however the second one was never made in the end as the finances were cut off meaning the experiment could not go ahead the ultra elite however continued to invest in this vault and one one specific resident known as Dr. Riggs decided another fate for the residents. Dr. Riggs worked for General Atomics with advanced robotics programs. They definitely rebel at some point. Project. With this, he and his wife convinced the other members of Group A that the only way they could survive this was to have their brains inserted into robo brains. As the war came, the vault was eventually sealed, and now the Group A residents, now robo brains, lived within the vault, making sure no one else could venture into their place of 
luxury. Only one human remained, however, that being the Overseer, making them the only test subject. As the time progressed, however, the Robo Brains became mad, and the Overseer died in the process. Damn. Since in isolation from the outside world, their plans to remain on their own would be changed as a murder took place within the vault, forcing the residents to seek outside help through a detective. What Vault 118 proves the robot is that the fell over. Elite. All right, it's just a bit weird, to be honest. And the final vault in the Fallout series that is registered as canon is the Unfinished Vault, also known as the Fake Vault 13. Like many of the vaults on this list, this vault never really came to fruition. Instead, it was just a cave which was to be the construction site of a vault that was never numbered. Whilst it is evident that the vault does not exist, one man named Merc within the NCR convinces people all over that he knows of Vault 13's location and will sell the hollow disc with it for $1,000. It, however, is just a blank cave where this unfinished vault was to be built, officially labeling this site as the fake Vault 13. Who knows what Vault Tech planned here? Maybe it was more drug experiments. Maybe it was another cloning. There's a lot of those. More Gary clones to take over the wasteland. Maybe it was more FEV testing areas. But one thing is for certain: if this vault ever did get finalized, knowing Vault Tech's history, you know it was probably going to be bad news for whoever ended up there. Yeah. It was bad news for and a lot of people. after covering all of the ones from the mainline games, we have the non-canon and cut vaults, which are ones that were either meant to be in the base game themselves as part of cancelled video games, and some that are part of the extended universe, but are not canon in the slightest, as they are part of an... Mm, I'm only going for canon here. I'm only going for canon. So I got to put a halt to this. Damn. I learned so much. What the? 95% of all of these vaults are tests. And only like three vaults I would actually want to live in. Only three. 76 being one of them. 100%. Or 69. Or 69. I'd want to go in that one too. I'd want to go in that one. Okay. 